So does your vote matter? The other day, someone asked me that. A friend actually asked me, does my vote, does it really matter? I was like, are, are you kidding? It's arguably the most important thing we do as Americans. So everybody out there, your vote matters, obviously. But it won't matter if it's not counted. It won't matter if you can't vote. It won't matter if the system doesn't accurately determine who won the most votes. And this is going on right now, and it's been going on for 15 years, longer. Um, and I have an amazing guest on today who's just directed a documentary on HBO. It came out two months ago. It blew my mind. De it depressed me and also fascinated me at the same time. And I thought I knew what was going on with our elections. Um, I wrote a book called Unlock Congress about how screwed up the Congress is and the rules that will uh, uh, improve it. But actually, while I was writing that book, in the back of my mind, I thought, you got to fix the voting first, the Voting Rights Act to begin with. But election security is a huge issue, and it's happening as we speak right now in May 2020, just several months before an election. So let me introduce my awesome guest. It's an honor to have her on. Sarah Teal is an Emmy award-winning, multi-award-winning documentarian. She has covered everything from uh, uh, farming in America to obesity to animal cruelty uh, to the psychiatric ward in Bellevue Hospital in New York. And now she is the director of Kill Chain, the cyber war on America's elections. Thank you. First of all, thank you for doing this, Sarah. I really you. appreciate you being here. Thank you for having me. No, it is, it, it is my honor. I was absolutely blown away by your journalism. Now, I want to let people know and then ask you the first question. You were the producer in 2006, we're talking about 14 years ago, of Hacking Democracy. So it won an Emmy, you, you, you showed right. the, the problems in the system, you thought things were gonna change because it's such right. a stark look. Right. Let's start with giving folks an overview of what this one, Kill Chain, the cyber war on American elections is about and what you and your researchers and co-directors discovered. Right, so no, the film we made in 2005, 2006 was called Hacking Democracy. And in that, um, Hari Hursty, who is a Finnish hacker genius, um, yeah. managed to show how easy it is to flip the vote. And he flipped the vote in Leon County, Florida, uh, with the permission of the election official there, um, Ion Sancho. So it was on real voting machines in a real circumstance in a real office, election office. Um, and it, as you said, it got nominated for an Emmy. It caused a big stir. There was a big fuss. We somehow thought that maybe people would fix this. Um, but no, we are still voting on the exact same machines in 20 different states and nothing's been fixed. And in fact, in some ways, it's gotten a lot worse because hackers now know how to do this really easily. I mean, 20, 2006, it took maybe a more professional, now anyone can do it. Um, and at DEF CON, which is the hacker, big hacker conference in Las Vegas, Hari Hursty set up um, a voting machine hacking village and kids as young as 11 were hacking these machines. Um, one guy we filmed hacked it across the room and turned the machine off and said he could have done it from a car driving by and changed any vote. Uh, it's it's extraordinary, and, and I'll urge people again, seriously, uh, uh, find this documentary on HBO. If you don't have HBO, find someone who does. Oh, it's also it. for free right now, I should say, on HBO's YouTube channel. If you go to their YouTube channel, it's for free. So even if you don't have HBO, um, you can watch it there. It's I'm gl I'm, no, I'm very glad you mentioned that. And, and to give people an idea, Hari Hursty is a Finnish programmer. He was a, a, a star of the first documentary and this one. And this, this guy was like writing code when he was a little kid. I mean, it's, it's just a, he's just a genius, very thick yeah. uh, accent. And he cares deeply about this stuff. And, you know, he's telling all the people, as Sarah was just saying at this DEF CON conference, all these hackers, you know, these you know, self-acknowledged sort of nerds who were all wired up to go in there and see how fast they can hack into these voting machines. And it was like that. Yeah. It, is, it, it is, was so quick. It was scary filming it because it was happening all over the room. They were all doing it. It was so scary to, to, to pick the right person that had gotten into the, you know, but it, and it happened so fast. So filming it was ridiculous. 
but uh, yeah, yeah, and and you know, it's it, Harry says in the movie I'm quoting, the memory card can be altered, and that will cause incorrect results. And every single element of the system will report the same incorrect yeah. results seamlessly, leaving no evidence, nothing to be detected. Right. End quote. And and he also said that if you don't think that the Russians right. are doing what these guys, these these kids did at DEFCON, right. round the clock year round with money behind them yeah in a, in in some room somewhere you're being naive so yeah. so talk about your outlook uh, uh uh for this year's elections i mean it yeah. feels i hate i hate using the word helpless but uh, talk about actually talk about uh, um in the senate what was proposed and what was shot down in terms of trying to fix this problem sarah oh well there has there's there have been now six bipartisan bills Republican and, and Dem Democrats coming together to do the bipartisan bill. And we had four of them in our film Kill Chain. Uh, Langford is a Republican. And then Amy Klobuchar and um, teamed up with Langford on one of the bills. Um, uh, Senator Warner and Senator Wyden, who's been really big in, in, in this issue. Um, and they have been trying and trying. There's been six separate bills, bipartisan. Mitch McConnell every single time refuses to even bring them up for a vote. So he won't, he just kills it every single time with instructions from the White House. And, and I just, that I don't understand why we are not prepared to secure our vote. And when we started making this film, Hari said, look, I refuse to believe it's the Russians until we see it for ourselves. I know, you know, 17 different intelligence services in Washington, um, all agreed that it was the Russians and that never happens, they never agree. Um, but he said, no, we should keep our minds open and not assume. And by the end of the film, by the end of three years of making this thing, it was obvious everywhere we looked, the Election Assistance Commission, Russian, Alaska, Russians, you know, everywhere we looked, it was Russian. So <laughs> it got to be ridiculous. Yeah, and the Senate bill you're talking about, look, there's a great scene in, in Sarah's film where um, it's the Senate committee that they're trying to get the bill out of. And my home state senator, Senator Richard Durbin, is asking the chair of the committee, Roy Blunt from Missouri, I believe, why, why? why can't we get this to the floor? Why can't we have a bipartisan vote on this? And, and, and the committee chair is basically saying, well, because the majority leader doesn't want it. That's right. why. That, that's it. That's One why. man, uh, well, two, this, he's getting his instructions from somewhere else. Um, but has the ability to stop this every single time. And it's been deeply frustrating. We did a, a live Facebook Live event with um, Senator Wyden recently. And, you know, he was sort of hopeful at the end, but I don't know why. He's been trying for years. And of course, his state, they've been voting by mail for a long, long time, Oregon. Yeah, so, right. Um, you know, maybe the coronavirus um, has actually been helpful in this sense <clears throat> because it's pushing this issue of vote by mail. Um, <clears throat> and that would be okay, but, but on the other hand, it'll still be counted. Those ballots that you mail in will still be counted by these machines that are deeply hackable. Um, so we still have to have um, risk limiting audits, random, uh, um, and without, without exception, you have to have risk limiting audit. Yeah, I want to, and I'm going to impress that upon folks uh, uh, watching and listening about uh, paper ballots and the risk limiting uh, audits uh, in a second. But first, and I should have asked this, I asked this a little out of order here, but talk about what happened in Georgia. You guys covered that election for governor where the Secretary of State, Brian Kemp, was overseeing the elections right. while he was running for governor right. and these machines were having problems. In fact, there's a scene where he's voting for himself and has to re-vote. <laughs> that is, Adam, it's almost like it's, it's almost like it's a feature film and not a documentary and somebody set the scene up. You couldn't write it any better. Uh, and then of course he was asked outside, well, is there anything wrong with the elections? No, it sounded no. like the president. Everything's going smooth, don't worry right. about it. What, what did you find in terms of of, of the failings of that election. And also, it also has to do with delaying people's 
wait in line, right? Elongating it so they're discouraged from voting, which is what kill chain, the term kill chain, we'll go into it, but that's sort of what it's about. It's about creating chaos right. in the whole system. Right, as Sue Halpern says, you know, if you, if you right. create chaos like that, or if you prevent people from voting by, because, you know, poor people, they've, they've got an hour for lunch, they come to vote, you know, they, they aren't able to vote. So um, what we found in Georgia, we, we went to the largest, second largest county in Georgia. It's a majority black county. Um, and none of the cards that start these machines up, these machines are so old. These are like in the old, old days, 20 years ago, when, when you used to have to start your, your Apple with a, with a memory card, with a machine, with a card. It, they're like that. They are so ancient. So there are these little cards that people use to start the machines up. None of them would work, all of them. If there'd been one randomly that didn't work, maybe, but none of them would work. And, and so Hari and Rich DeMillo, who was um, the head of Georgia Tech for a while, I think he's now a senior professor there, um, had a discussion about how does that happen? And, and Rich DeMillo says, well, you know, you can put them in the microwave and cook them. But this happened in three majority black counties, three, where they, and it, so it led to delays that were up to between five and six hours. And people stood in line for five hours to vote, which breaks your heart. It, 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 it's absolutely, it's, it's, it's just, it's exasperating, Sarah. And I, I want to read something. Um, let me read something here that Hari said that toward the end of the film, because then it's called kill chain. And for people who don't understand what that means, um, it is a methodical strategy for how to disrupt a system or a country and a system within a country that disrupts uh, the country. And he goes, he explains it in detail over a couple paragraphs. But at the end, he says this, quote, I think the most important part of the kill chain is the paralyzation of your adversaries. And when the government cannot assess the situation, take an action and correct it, that's when paralyzation happens. That's really when you finish the target. Right. The chain will go on until you break a link, stopping them while maintaining and remaining true to your values. That's the tricky part. We live in a, end quote, we live in a democracy. This is not authoritarian where you can just put the hammer down, even if you were a president who wanted to do that. Um, so, so let's go back to uh, 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 the paper ballots. You're talking about these ancient machines right. and people say, you know, some of these election officials say, oh, they're, you know, they're not connected to the internet. That's not true. That's not true. Yeah. Even the way that the votes are fed into a system after you voted, the internet, once the internet touches any of these things, just touch us. Right. All of it's traceable, right? Yeah. And, and I have to tell you what happened to us in New York, and this isn't in the film, but it was really interesting and it's yeah. haunted me. So. They, you, they have to allow us to film in New York. It's a public space. It's a public event. We, they have to give us permission. We had to have a letter and we had a letter. And a lot of people voting those scenes were in New York. But then there is this process, and it happens all across the country, where those um, votes are that now in, in New York, they happen to be on, on little things that you put into the computer, when they're aggregated and they're sent to a central counting place. It happens all across the country, all the precincts then report back to, and mostly that has happened across the internet. And in New York, it happens across the internet. So we wanted to go to the central counting place where everything was counted centrally. And they had to give us permission, so they did. And we ran from the precinct when it closed down over there. When we got there, they said, oh no, no, it's, it's all done, it's all finished, nothing to see. <laughs> Which was just, a, they would not let us in. Because what you will see is simply the internet. It's simply computers aggregating the votes. And from one precinct all across New York State to this one central counting place, anybody can hack in there and change that. Anybody. It's, it's, it's easy for those who know. Yeah, and you know what, Sarah, you, you show in the movie, you show in the film um, that, that the, the voting machines in Georgia, they were just used before this gubernatorial election that Brian Kemp was overseeing, the Secretary right. of State who became governor. If I'm not mistaken, the, Same lobby, machine that the, lobby, the lobbyist for the election machines 
that were screwed up became yeah. his chief of staff right after he became governor. Is that yeah. accurate? Yeah. And these are, these are the same machines that Harry hacked in 2006. D that, just just <laughs> repeat for folks. The it's same machines that you did a movie on 15 years ago yeah. and showed how they were yeah. faulty. Yeah, same machines were just used in the election. And Marilyn Marks, who is in our film, but we had actually filmed with her across three years. She sued to have those machines replaced. And eventually, just recently, she won that lawsuit. Um, so they have replaced those machines that are now 15 years old, more. Um, but they have replaced them with machines that do have a paper ballot, but they ha only have a barcode on it. So your vote is on a barcode. So you cannot see yourself what is in that barcode. Right. And this election coming up in November, actually there's primaries that are starting on May 18th. Where was that? Yesterday. The early voting starts and the primaries on June 8th. They are going to be using 33,000 machines that they have never tested. They have never tested. Oh, and, and in November, they will be voting on those. But in the primary, and there's a really big Senate race coming up in Georgia. Oh, yes. And, and they are going to be voting on machines that nobody's used before. And they're also touchscreen machines. So in this time of coronavirus, how are we going to keep people safe from touching constantly? We're all touching the same thing. And, and also the, the, the poll workers in Georgia, the average age is over 70, and they're mostly black women. The, the, the ex exact age of most people getting coronavirus, these poll workers aren't wanting to, going to come, and the polling places are in schools, and the schools aren't wanting to have the elections, all these people coming into the schools in the time of coronavirus, and that's happening now. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and you know, there's a there's a part in the movie where in at DEFCON, all the hackers are and I'm gonna to get to the paper ballot through through making this point. All these hackers are they're gleeful that they're getting into the, these machines so easily, right? They're just they're just like kids in a candy store. Right. And they, they're so amused. They're amused at how easy it is to hack these machines. And um the 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 answer to this is going not back to the future, but back to the back, back to the past when you just did this by paper ballots. And even if you're gonna use the machines, you have to have a paper trail to do the risk limiting audit. So right. talk about that, why that's so important that actually when the, simple, when the system was simpler, that's when we could make sure that it was accurate. Even if a mistake was made, you could recount. Talk about that for a minute. Yeah, no, it, without, there are still 20 different states that, no, five, five different states that do not have paper ballots at all. So there is no way to do a recount if there's a problem. Um, and in many of those states, there have been problems, but they can't recount. P Pennsylvania is one of them. Um, but if you have paper, and you have paper where you can see how a person, what their intention is, a hand-marked paper, um, then you can put them through the, the, the machines to count them, so in other words, quickly, because you don't want to go way back when you all had to go one, two, three. But, so you can put them through these counters fast, um, but then in order to be sure that, the, that it's accurate, you, do, you, you start counting a percentage of those, of those ballots. And you keep counting a percentage until you're really sure that, you, that, that, that the result is correct. So sometimes that's going to take you all of them, but usually you can count a percentage and you'll know. So that's the idea. And we all, as, as, as voters, we should all be writing to our election officials and demanding a paper ballot and demanding right. audits. Writing, making phone calls. I was going to wait till yeah. the end for that, but, but, but yeah. people need to speak up, right? Yeah. Is there, is there a, still a Senate bill, a bill number that people can reference if they're calling and saying, I want you to pass SB so-and-so. Is that bill still? Oh, that's, that's, a, that's a good question. And um, I'm not sure that even Senator Wyden knows the answer to that. I know they were trying to reintroduce the bill that was Senator Klobuchar and James Langford, who is Republican, that, that they, the, the Secure Elections Act. They were going to try and reintroduce it. Um, but every time it comes up, you know, it just gets squashed back down again. But, but yes, we should all keep an eye on the Secure Elections Act um, and make sure that, that they bring it to the floor. 
you know, the other, uh, the other fascinating thing and mind, and mind blowing is that in that DEF CON conference, the, the, you, you quote the person who put it together and he invited the election machine companies. Yes. Election, I think it's, it, let's see. There's only three major companies, ES and S, yeah, Heart into Civic and Dominion. Right, and, and, and invited them. And, and it, it, in a way, it wasn't even a, hey, we're going to call bullshit on you guys. It was, no. look, these guys are going to show you all the failings in the system, and then you can improve upon them. In fact, if you can make the argument, Sarah, that if one of them, and, and none of them took them up on it. That's yeah. the point. I mean, none, none of them would do it. You yeah. can make the argument that if one of them did it and learned the problems with their right. machines, they could have marketed past the other two companies and said, we have taken every last precaution. Right. We've had the smartest people on technology yeah. sit in the room and try to get through and hear right. the things we've done about it. Right. That, that broke my heart. The I know. of it. I know. And, and Senator Wyden has written to those companies many, many times and he's called them to testify, and they won't appear. One guy from Heart into Civic came, ES, no one from Dominion, no one from Smartmatic, which is another company, no one from ESNS, they wouldn't appear. And they are paid by our tax money, our dollars. And, and they, their, their customer is the government, and they wouldn't appear to, to testify in front of them, to yeah. explain to them. And they wouldn't ask Wyden's simple question. Do you have a cybersecurity person on your staff looking at your machines? They wouldn't even answer those questions. You would, you would think that they'd put them under subpoena, but of course that oh. takes the will of the committee. That takes political will. It's not. Well, I think they tried. I think they, they, <clears throat> they seriously tried to get, especially ESNS, which is the biggest company. Um, <laughs> I think eventually he came and spoke to Wyden, but it would didn't go well <laughs> would. yeah I, I no i can't imagine and and so let's 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 close this out by talking about um this election and and not just paper ballots but like what you started to mention a few minutes ago about how this may be an opportunity now let let's just get this i i i don't i, I this is this sh this program is not partisan i i don't really take right. it. Back. Our film is not partisan. Right, right. That's the point I'm making. And most subjects I talk about uh, uh, and change makers, you see over my shoulder, it's changed the world and people like you that are uh, uh, doing extraordinary things to try to change the world and try to keep partisan politics out of it. But there's really no way around the fact that, again, the Senate Majority Leader did not want this to come to the floor. Right. And right now we have a, a President of the United States who votes by mail Right. And is and is I'm sorry, li I'm not sorry, lying on television each day that that voting by mail is fraught with all kinds of fraud and it doesn't work. <laughs> it's not true. It's already done in states. I believe Oregon's all all you will correct all me, of all Oregon. All by right. All vote by, by mail. mail. And so yes. with, with, with coronavirus going on at this time, when your film's coming out and we're talking, we're five months away from an election no matter what the president says, it's still possible that you could have a breakthrough and allow paper ballots yeah. by mail for everybody yeah. who wants them, if not mandated due to the fact that we yeah. might not be able to vote in mass. Talk right. about that, Sarah. And in California, they have already instituted that. And um, Alex Padilla, who's the Secretary of State, has said, you can either come and vote in person if you want to do that, you can either bring your mail-in ballot that we have sent you to the location, or you can mail it back. Whatever you want to do, you can do. And that seems to me the, the only way to go, is to give people the options and also to have early voting. Um, but to do it in a way that also makes it easier for the, the, the poll workers, because we are going to have far less poll workers in November um, and in the primaries. Than, than we've ever had before. Because as we all know, most of them are elderly and most of them are going to be fearful of coming into a public place like that. So we have to do it in a way that's sensible, that's early voting and that's on paper and that we can see ourselves that are hand marked, uh, that they are going to be counted. Absolutely. Um, you know, Let's, let's let me finish this by giving you the floor on a question that 
should should be obvious to folks, but I'd like to hear it in your words. You've spent a, a whole lot of time doing this twice. So years, <laughs> right, multi years worth of work um, right. um, putting these films together. And uh, I'm sure at some sometimes when you were putting this together, you you woke up thinking, this is this is surreal that I'm going through this again. And and maybe right. sadly, you'd only be human to wonder toward what end. Um, you know, but but I love the fact that you just kept at it and you took to, you know, you produced the first film, I believe, and you directed this one with two other directors and it's just fantastic. I, I, I did a documentary many years ago when I was in television. I know how hard it is and I was just blown away by, honestly, I, 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 I don't mean to uh, gush, but I'm blown away by the journalism in this movie. So the last question is, in view of that and all the time you've spent, in your words, Sarah, tell people why it is so important that they care about this issue and write a letter or make a phone call or, or you know, let their legislators know that that Election Security Act is so important. Tell me in your words why you care so much about it. I care so much about it because if we care about our schools, if we care about um, mental health, if we care about anything that touches all of us, we care about our taxes, we care about anything. It, it's incumbent on us to vote because we are putting leaders in positions who are making big decisions for us about our taxes, our money, our schools, everything, and, and everything. everything, everything about <clears throat> the, the water that we drink <laughs> and whether it's gonna be sold off, about our post office, which I personally care a great deal about. You know, all these things are, it's incumbent on us to put in people that believe the same way that we do, whether you're a Republican or you're a Democrat. And, and so in order to be heard, in order to have your voice heard, which is the difference between us and authoritarian governments, we have to fix it. And we have to insist on paper ballots and audits um, in order to do it. Yeah, so well said. And you know, it's 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 it seems like a, a silly question, and the and the answer to anybody who's been American for more than five minutes should be obvious. But I think that people get so cynical about politics. Even I do when I write I I write about it. Uh, but the bottom line is, people who get so cynical that they say, "Oh, it doesn't matter. They're all the same." Blah blah blah. It's not yeah. true. And it's also your local. I'd like to say one other yeah. thing. It's really local. You know, in 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 often in your local area. They're making decisions about millions of dollars to pay for roads or to pay for bridges or to pay for your schools. And it's, it, these, these are in local machines that are just as easily hackable, just as easily adjustable, whether it be some local kid who thinks it's right. funny right. or some guy sitting in Russia who owns your local voting machine. And that's not funny. They're making decisions on multi-millions of dollars that are our dollars, our taxes. So and, and, and as the film points out, this is not just about the Senate and the presidency. We're talking no. about, you look, your city, I covered city council elections uh, in, in more than one city as a reporter. Yeah. And from the minute you get up in the morning, where you park your car, right? right? The, the taxes you pay, the schools, yeah. the per pupil spending, Things, Everything. things, the the ordinance on what your garage yeah. has. Or if you're a farmer, you know, I we have a place in, in, in upstate New York with, with a lot of farmers up there who tend to vote Republican. But, you know, the support that the farmers are not getting. They need to put people in place who Republican or Democrat who support farmers and farming. And, you know, we need to vote for that kind of thing. Yeah, no, big time. I, I, I couldn't agree more and uh, and I'll never stop caring about it. And I love people who put this kind of effort into educating. Look, the only, at the end of the day, you can't, you can't get people riled up until they're educated and realize just, just how big a problem is. How vulnerable it, this whole thing is. Yeah, and, and, and it can be tricky with this kind of thing because it feels a little removed, right? It's not coronavirus where it's life or death in your face for your 75-year-old mother or grandmother or, or, or your neighbor or whatever. This is about a system. It's and the hardest thing because people do not want to think about it. They want to think that they can right. walk into their local school where their local people, I voted in the same place in Manhattan for 30 years and I was one of the people bounced off the voting rolls in 2016. But you walk in and you see people that you haven't seen since the last election, they say hello, you do your bit 
and you walk out. And that's what you want to do. And you don't want to think about it. But in fact, it's so important. I, you know, it's really it, hard to make, it, to, to it, have it, people understand. It absolutely is. I can't, I can't thank you enough. Uh, folks, the, the, the movie is Kill Chain, The Cyber War on America's Elections. And by the way, if you're curious, and you'll see in that film, Hacking Democracy 2006, uh, that, that in 2006, Hacking Democracy was the first film. But check out Kill Chain. It will, it will, it will keep you glued from beginning to end uh, and hopefully make you want to do something about it, even if it's tell somebody else to watch it. I wish I could mandate 330 million Americans having to watch this film. Sarah Teal, thank you so much for doing this. It was a pleasure and an honor to talk to you. Thank you for your time.